In this video, we will talk about energetics and stabilization of small rings. So as you can see, there are, are two major sources for strain in small rings, with one of them being Bayer strain. And Bayer strain is just basically an explanation that suggests that uh, we have unstable orbital overlap. And torsional strain describes eclipsing interactions. And, and remember, eclipsing interactions are, are typically shown on Newman projections. And they look like this. And this just simply suggests that uh, our bonds are overlapping one another or eclipsing and that they are at a high energy state relative to a staggered interaction and in which looks something like this where we have bonds that are 60 degrees apart from one another. And remember the uh, staggered interaction is going to be more stable. So I just wanted to uh, explain that briefly and another thing too is that with small rings I am referring to a three-membered ring up to a six-membered ring. So, so I want to make that clarification. So now with, with Bayer strain, going back to, into that, um, Bayer strain basically provides a basis for, for where strain occurs and, and where it doesn't. And that basis is, is built off of a tetrahedron geometry, such as in this case. Because a tetrahedron geometry has a degree angle of 109 point five and and that's that's what Bayer strain does is it it basically measures a destabilizing energy effect that results from deviation of a hundred and nine point five degrees so if you are over a hundred and nine point five you will have Bayer strain and if you are under a hundred and nine point five you will have Bayer strain and so so I just want to want to clarify as well that uh, this is going to be our our basis for that so now we can we can talk about a cyclopropane. Now with cyclopropane we have this internal angle of approximately 60 degrees which is going to be much lower than our our desired 109.5. So so this is definitely going to have a uh, Bayer strain and then we also have uh, a little bit of eclipsing interactions as well. Now, now the, the main source of strain on, on cyclopropane is going to be with, with Bayer strain, but, but I just want to mention that we also have a minimal um, strain coming from, from the uh, eclipsing interactions as well. Now we can uh, talk about cyclobutane. And with cyclobutane, we have this internal angle of approximately 90 degrees. So we're getting a little closer to our desired 109.5, but we're still not quite there. And, and we, we're improving on, on Bayer strain relative to the uh, cyclopropane example that was, that was mentioned right here. But, but we, uh, we still have eclipsing interactions and these eclipsing interactions are now closer to one another than they were in cyclopropane. So, so if we were to compare this to cyclopropane, I'm just simply saying that we are going to have an increase in the uh, eclipsing interactions.
but we will have a slight decrease in, in Bayer strain. And that's just simply due to us improving from 60 degrees to 90 degrees. So now let's uh, demonstrate this on cyclopentane. And with cyclopentane, we have an internal angle of approximately 108 degrees. Now, now that's going to be very close to 109.5. So, so with 108 degrees, we are really going to have really hardly any Bayer strain at all. But, but we will have much more eclipsing interactions than we had in both previous examples. So, so now I'd like to talk about how these rings react to these two stresses that I've mentioned previously. And the two stresses are the Bayer strain and the, and the torsional strain caused by eclipsing interactions. So, so these rings respond to this by a process called puckering. And, and puckering basically uh, suggests that the ring is not in a single plane and that the, these bonds actually move up and down relative to one another and they do this to minimize the stress and, and ultimately try to, it tries to increase the energy level of, or decrease the, uh, the energy level by uh, stabilizing the, uh, the molecule a little, a little better than, than it was previously uh, prior to the puckering. So now let's, let's just see how, how puckering affects these three different molecules. So with cyclopropane, puckering really doesn't have any effect whatsoever because these, these rings are, are these, uh, these sigma bonds are just so tightly bound to one another that there is really no room for, for flexibility. And, and so as a result of that, we are going to say that cyclopropane is going to be the least stable of these. And that's going to be due to an inability to pucker or, or no puckering. Now with cyclobutane, puckering will, will play uh, uh, somewhat of a role in this and, and as a result it's going to, let me just write this in a different color so we can differentiate, but, but with puckering we are going to increase Bayer strain, but we will decrease torsional strain. And we do that simply by um, taking the 90 degrees and, and bending those, those bonds by a little bit, and, and as a result we, we reduce that eclipsing interaction that, that you see, and, and when we do that, we, we ultimately lower the energy level by, by, a, uh, by an amount that would be significant relative to, to not puckering. And by the way, with puckering, we, we actually establish a, a new conformation as well, and, and that conformation is called a butterfly. And it looks something like this. And if I draw the uh, carbons, we'll be able to see some of the bonds. And now I mentioned that we are bending these a little bit. So, so if I had to guess, we'd probably go from, I don't know, maybe say um, 90 degrees to say 85 or something like that. So, so it's not going to be a dramatic decrease, but, but we will be decreasing by, by a slight amount in order to uh, reduce that torsional strain and those eclipsed interactions. So now let's apply puckering to cyclopentane. And, and remember, with cyclopentane, we actually had no Bayer strain to begin with. But, but with puckering, we actually alter and increase the, uh, the Bayer strain. And, 
We'll demonstrate it like this. But we do that to compensate for the eclipsing interactions, just like we did in the uh, previous example, and we reduce the torsion strain. So it's really a, a compensation that, that's occurring where, where we're, you know, this, through this puckering interaction, it's, it's basically um, substituting a little bit of the, uh, the Bayer strain for, um, for a, uh, a reduced amount of, of torsional strain. And ultimately, the energetics demonstrate that, that it is uh, ultimately lower, lower in um, energy and higher in stability by, by uh, puckering in this, in this way. And this is actually called a, or after it puckers, we, we demonstrate a, uh, an envelope conformation which looks something like this. And let's just demonstrate these carbons. So it's something like this. And so that is, uh, once again, an envelope. And over here, remember, this was a butterfly. So now let's apply this to cyclopentane. I'm sorry, cyclohexane. And with cyclohexane, we actually have a degree angle of approximately 120 degrees. And that's an internal angle as, as drawn with, with all of the uh, previous examples. Now we still show that we have a lot of eclipsing interactions. And so, so now, once we apply puckering, and let me just change the color again to demonstrate that. So with puckering, we actually go from 120 degrees of an internal angle to approximately 109.5 degrees. So we are right there in, in, a perfect, in a perfect degree angle that'll basically take away all of our Bayer strain. So we can just basically put a check mark next to that and say that uh, we're not going to have any, any Bayer strain. And, and the next thing that's going to happen through puckering is we are going to go from eclipsed interactions to staggered interactions. And, and that's going to take away all of the, uh, the torsional strain as well. And so let's just uh, demonstrate that by, by showing a Newman projection. And, and they're typically drawn like this in reference to cyclohexane rings. So these are connected, and then these are connected. And we'll just show our carbons. And remember, there are some carbons right behind here too, but, but those are typically difficult to see from this viewpoint when we are staring at these uh, Newman projections.
And so the point of this Newman projection is, is just to basically demonstrate that we have a staggered conformation. And that is in contrast to, to the uh, eclipse interaction that was that was shown previously to the uh, or that was shown before the uh, the puckering occurred. So now from this we can conclude that we actually have zero strain. for cyclohexane. So, so in our previous examples with cyclopropane, puckering really didn't play a role at all bec because the, uh, the bonds were so, were so uh, strained and, and unable to, to move. And then we had an example with cyclobutane where, where puckering played a role, but, but it, it simply minimized the, uh, the um, the stability of the uh, or, or maximize the stability of the molecule, but it didn't completely eliminate it, and, and that was the, the same was true for the uh, cyclopentane example as well, but but for cyclohexane we ended up with zero strain, so so that's actually pretty unusual relative to the uh, other rings we've demonstrated before, and so that makes cyclohexane. the king of puckering. And uh, that's why it has zero strain. And, and that is a uh, demonstration and explanation into energetics and stabilization of small rings.